Thank you. I uh, really appreciate all of you coming. I have to tell you that uh, throughout my life as an artist, I've had lots of wonderful experiences, but truly one of the great honors in my life was that I became a friend of Steve's, and it is one of the huge privileges that I consider in my lifetime to have been welcomed into the Shadowbox family, especially to be here today, and I, I thank all of you for coming uh, this evening. I met uh, Steve through a mutual friend, one of the great arts advocates in Columbus, Diane Catron, who when she met with me and my executive producer and business partner in Songs at the Center, a guy by the name of Jack Fitzgerald, she said, the two of you have to meet Steve and Stacy. And we, uh, we met out there in the bistro, and they were incredibly generous with their time and their knowledge, and Jack and I left with two new heroes. And we didn't know that just a few months later, we would actually be working with Shadowbox in producing an episode of Songs at the Center for, um, of, of Gallery of Echoes for Songs at the Center. And it was one of our great privileges and one of our great joys to make that show possible for the entire nation to see on our show. That first meeting, I asked Steve, I said, you know, one of the things I'm curious about is how do you reconcile being an artist yourself, a composer, performer, singer, and I said, but also having you do all that other stuff you have to do with shadow box, you know, being bookkeeper, promoter, administrator, legal specialist, a licensing, a licensing expert, and he said, I love all of them. And he said, you know, you have to, you have to embrace the struggle. Well, Steve not only embraced it, but succeeded at the struggle in unprecedented ways. When we look at his success, it was in all areas. He was, he was successful as an artist. He was successful as an entrepreneur and as a community servant. It's been written that one of the greatest gifts we can give each other is helping them find their voice. And when we think about the artists that Steve has mentored and worked with and how many of them he's given voice to, it's astounding. He's given voice to you, the audience, and he's given a voice to Columbus itself nationally. And as Tom mentioned earlier about the Steve Innovation Fund, that's going to continue. And just this week, Stacy, in all of the many, many things that she does, she hosted for two days scores of Columbus students here at Shadowbox to help them find their voice. And he did this while, all the time, building and maintaining great friendships, loyal following, and having associates who willingly and with passion work for him for more than a decade. Think about how unusual that is in our world. Steve was able to take artists of all people and have them work for him for more than a decade. We, um, as Stacy said, we became fast friends and I was so honored um, to spend any time I could with him. We spent a lot of time together. And I remember one time we were in uh, having dinner in German Village. And this young, attractive woman came up to him and says, oh, you're Steve Geyer. And uh, she got all excited. And he introduced me. This is Eric Nesda. And she goes, uh, Eric Nesda, the guy with the TV show? And I said, yeah. And she goes, God, my grandmother loves you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time I took him to dinner. <laughs> but you know, our, our world is filled with people who are in leadership positions, but the truth is there are not really that many leaders among us. But Steve was one of the few who was truly a leader. And there are a couple things that uh, we can learn from Steve as leaders, and, and one is 
that unless a job is hopelessly impossible, it's not worth doing. The second thing is that when your dream literally burns up in front of your eyes, what do you do? You call your team together at 5.30 in the morning at Waffle House to tell them what the plan is. <laughs> and the third thing is that when it's time to go to the corporation or the arts organization for that big check, send Stacy. <laughs> I also learned that wisdom sometimes is best communicated in two short expletives. <laughs> Those of you who didn't get that, you can talk to the folks in the front. <laughs> anyway, you know, he was fond of saying that uh, you should leave nothing in the dressing room, give everything you have to your audience and help them climb that mountain with you. An English poet, Christina Rossetti, wrote in her poem, Uphill, does the road wind uphill all the way? Yes, to the very end. Will the day's journey take the whole long day? From morn to night, my friend. Steve, by choice, took the uphill journey he insisted upon it for himself. And as he did that, he led countless people up that mountain with other artists, audiences. He did it as an entrepreneur and as an arts advocate and mostly as a friend. In doing so, he became <coughs> bigger than life. And his legacy his challenge to all of us is to not only work to accomplish more than we ever thought possible, but to be more than we ever thought possible. I love you, brother. <laughs>